Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and in this presentation we're going to be continuing our video series on testing physical performance and this one's going to be on testing endurance. So first we need to establish what we mean by endurance and what we mean by endurance specific to sport. So endurance is essentially the ability to repeat performance and that's going to be specific to the sport or the athlete. So what I mean by this is that Endurance can be both continuous or intermittent and can have varying durations or distances. So for example, if we typically think about our endurance athletes, something like a marathon runner or a triathlete, they basically need to repeat a lower intensity continuous performance as fast as they possibly can. But athletes in team sports also need a different specific type of endurance. So for example, if we look at a soccer player, they have to perform repeated bouts of high intensity efforts with really low intensity rest or recovery periods. So that's going to be a different form of endurance where they need to be able to repeat that high intensity performance with limited recovery. So when we're selecting tests for endurance, we can have either continuous or intermittent tests. So continuous tests are something like a VO2 max, time trials, or a beat test, whereas intermittent tests are something like standardized repeat sprintability tests or a yo-yo intermittent recovery test. So a VO2 max test is generally only available in labs and that's a major limitation of how they're going to be implemented. VO2 max tests essentially measure the ability to uptake and use oxygen and they don't necessarily test performance. So basically the athlete will be strapped up here and all the inspired and expired air will be measured and how much oxygen they uptake and use is basically going to be used as a measure of aerobic performance. And this is essentially measuring the physiology behind performance, but not directly measuring performance, which is another limitation and one other reason why it, why it might not be preferentially used as a test. We then have time trials. They're going to be a very effective measure of directly testing aerobic performance. So we can use varying distances and they're very easy to implement. So based on the athlete or the team, we can use whatever distances we want and we can do this by running, cycling, swimming, rowing, etc. And basically the entire team can do the whole test at once. It'll take a very short amount of time and it's very easy to set up. We can then have some standardized tests, something like a beep test. And there are other forms of standardized tests as well that again, directly measure aerobic performance. And basically these sort of standardized tests are going to have the athlete continually perform aerobic activity until they are completely exhausted. So it tests their maximum aerobic ability. In terms of intermittent endurance tests, we have again other standardized tests. And these are probably going to be more applicable for team sports as we mentioned previously. So we have something like a repeated sprint ability test, which is essentially going to measure the drop off in sprint performance over repeated bouts. So the athletes will have a certain distance that they need to run as fast as they possibly can with a short rest period and then sprint again and continuously do that for a certain amount of efforts. And this is a great overall test to measure ability of the specific sport. However, we do need to understand that speed plays a major role in the performance of this test. So usually the test is scored by total sprint time rather than drop off in sprint performance. The reason for this is that if you measure drop off in sprint performance, you can basically go sub maximally for the first half of the bouts and maintain that same sub maximal effort for the entire duration and then have essentially no drop off in performance. So, because each effort has to be maximal, the speed of the athlete is going to play a major role. So, if an athlete gets faster, maybe they didn't necessarily improve their aerobic performance, they just performed the first half of the test faster. So that's a limitation we need to consider. We then have a test like the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, which is quite a similar test to the beep test. However, the only difference is that it's intermittent, it's not continuous. So the yo-yo intermittent recovery test is here on this diagram. The athlete essentially starts at these cones here, runs up and back in time with the tape recording, and then gets a break and walks five meters up, five meters back, and continues that as the speed gets faster. And they do this until exhaustion. 
So we're getting a really good blend of aerobic recovery ability and also high intensity activity without actually having to maximally sprint. So this is gonna be a really good option for athletes in team sports. And most importantly, the tests that we select, we have to make sure that they're appropriate for your athlete or athletes based on a variety of factors. So based on the sport that they play and more specifically the position of that athlete, how well you can repeat that and continually get accurate results to assess changes. And then lastly, the preferences of the athletes. If the athlete doesn't want to do a certain test, they're less likely to put maximal effort into it. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.